Hello and welcome to the video. This is my first video on this stuff here. Now this is the new HD FPV system designed by Fat Shark and Walk Snail. Now I've had these in a little while um, and I've been playing with them here and before I got them in I'm watching YouTube videos to try and figure out what the system is and how well it works and I was confused, very confused and I don't think I'm on my own with that. Opinions vary dramatically. So in this video, I'm going to talk about some of that and why I think that's happening and also give you an overview of the hardware because although the firmware is changing very quickly and giving significantly improved views and video and significantly improved features as well, um, I thought it would be useful. To, we'll have a look at the hardware because unless Pixies steal into my house in the night and upgrade them while they're fixing my shoes, the hardware is the hardware and that isn't going to change in the foreseeable future. Now I love flying HD FPV. It is almost life changing and if you're used to analog FPV and then you try a HD system it's a little bit overwhelming at first how much you can see. Now different pilots want different things from high definition FPV. Some want super low latency for racing, so things like the HD0 system are perfect for that. Some want more range, some want more features, some pilots fly different kind of models, some fly different styles, some are racing, some are doing exploring, some are doing flippy floppy. But almost all of us want a long life for the product so that we don't invest in something and then within six months have to buy something else. And that means that all the videos that have been created, there are lots of voices with different agendas and very subjective ideas. The thing that's complicating this is the firmware is changing all the time. And that means that the image and the quality of the video is improving all the time. And the features are too. In fact, the latest release that's just come out has included something that I've been waiting for. But ready to fly HD systems like this aren't cheap. It's about $500 for the goggles and about $150 per model. So if you wanted to put a HD system on four models that you have, whatever that is, then you need to splash out about a thousand dollars, a thousand pounds. At the moment here in the UK, looking on Hobby RC, it was £159 per Avatar HD micro kit and it's $558 for the goggles that I have here. Is it worth it? A thousand pounds if you already own a HD system that works for you. What about if you don't? Now those who already have a HD system will need a very compelling reason to change. And what constitutes a compelling reason is different for everybody. What would that be for you? So every pilot needs to weigh the benefits of the system versus the cost of the change. And that's what I want to explore in my videos. Those who don't have HD yet are waiting to see how it all shakes out. How well will it work when the firmware updates slow down and you get a more consistent view of how good the system is. Most of the pilots that I talk to that are flying analog that are looking at things like walk snail are waiting for the spring to buy their goggles because they don't want to make an investment that's going to bite them in the backside. And I've spent the last few weeks talking to Patreons and other FPV pilots to find out what people want to see on this stuff. And the most interesting answers have been from the analog pilots looking to make the move to HD. So they are going to be the focus of the content that I'm going to create. So why am I making my videos now? Well, there's been enough updates to make the system comparisons and reviews and show you some footage to make them meaningful. And the latest update now includes iNav on-screen display support, something that's very important to me. So I'm going to talk very briefly about why I love to fly in HD. I made a video comparing some HD footage and some analog footage for a Patreon a while back. And I've made videos in the past where I've explained that on a scale of one to 10, where 10 is HD FPV flying, then even the best analog is only gonna be about five on that scale. It is completely a different experience. Flying HD is the best way to fly FPV, period. The only issue is that it spoils you after flying in high definition. And if I take two goggles to the field, I will try and fly my analog stuff first and then go on to the HD stuff because I still fly both. 
But again, it isn't cheap, especially if you've already invested in a good analog setup. Even that is going to be the best part of $800, $1,000 when you get the goggles and the module and the cameras and the VTXs and the good antennas. So why are there so many different opinions in the videos on YouTube? Well, I've been flying HD for about six years now and personally own four different HD systems, but some suit me better than others. So not all HD systems are created equal. Some systems, like the HD0 stuff, prioritize low latency. Some prioritize the image, some do a bit of both. Some are good for lots of model types with smaller transmitters and camera and different options. Others, not so much. Some are based on very close proprietary systems. Others are less entrenched. This is a big part of why it's so hard to get that consistent view of how good this new system is. Because everyone doing their review is having different expectations and experiences. And there have been lots of comparisons with existing HD systems. However, because typically they're using older firmware, it gives very different experiences depending on the firmware that they're flying. So you have to really watch for that. Videos are becoming out of date on this system incredibly quickly. A video from even two weeks ago could be talking about stuff that's already changed. And for me, it's mainly quad flyers out there doing the videos, and I fly other stuff too. Now, I do need to thank all of those channels out there who haven't leaned into the clickbait about this system. Thank you for trying to help explain what this system actually is without all the hyperbole and controversy. As much as I'd like to remove my own bias from videos like this, I don't think that's a realistic goal because you can't help as somebody explaining the system have a little bit of your own biases creep into the video. So let me set my stall out. I fly multi-rotors, wings, planes, and even drive RC cars and the odd boat. My ideal way of flying is over the countryside with a buddy exploring. I don't race quads. I fly for fun, and my perfect flying day is a few of my favourite planes and a couple of my favourite quads, a flying buddy, and a calm, clear sky. So I've mentioned already that the firmware is changing quickly, and why is that? And is that a bad thing? Now, this is a common question I'm getting as I talk to pilots, so I'm going to cover it here. Products in development are tested within a controlled group and then released when they think all the bugs and issues are fixed. Once released, the great and washed of us pilots get the system and we try to do things that the controlled testing system just didn't really try. And that's when we find the extra bugs and issues and also find features that we want that are currently missing. Then the vendor takes all of that feedback and addresses these and adds the fixes and features that we want and releases additional firmware. The point of when a product is released and we get our hands on it is really down to the vendor's methodology. Too early and then there are lots of issues and then there are lots of things that need fixing and that usually means that there are lots of firmware updates. And that's not uncommon, particularly with HD systems. If they wait too long, then release the product, then they could lose the initiative in the market and one of their competitors could have already brought something out that means it's a tricky place to compete. Now I saw this all the time when I worked for computer manufacturers. Some products seemed to be shipped a little bit too early, particularly laptops, it meant that BIOS and firmware were updated far too quickly and customers experienced problems. And this is more common in the fast-paced modern internet lifestyles that we have these days. Products change so quickly. Now, products with less updates after release usually mean they've had a broader, deeper set of testing before they are released to the public. So updates are not a bad thing if the hardware is not the limiting factor. It shows that the manufacturer is listening and responding to community issues and asks. Too many updates, though, can point to a product that was released a little early. On the flip side, too few updates, and it usually means they're no longer supporting or pushing that particular product. So with that said, what do I intend to do with my videos? Well, I'm less interested in the side-by-side -side video comparisons with other HD systems. Lots of other channels are doing lots of that. And I'm less interested in picking over the speeds and feeds and differences between codecs. And I'm definitely not interested in controversy and clickbait to drive views. 
I am more interested in how well does it work? How easy is it to set up? What do I like about it? And does it have the stuff that I've missed under the systems? Things like HDM outport, OSD recording, lost model help, etc. How well does it work with other systems like analog at the field? I don't fly on my own. Occasionally I will, but most of the time I'm flying with a flying buddy. How well does it work on models that aren't quadcopters? And looking at what's on the latest firmware and what else in that is missing for me. And always putting my date on my videos and being very clear about the firmware that's used in testing. Now there are things that no reviewer can answer, and that is how long will the system be on sale, how long will it be supported, how long will it be viable. But we can talk about what the system is and what it isn't. So with all that said, here's an overview of the hardware parts of the new Fatshark Walksnail system. Now the goggles are available in two versions, with the Fat Shark, which is white and grey, and the Walk Snail version, which are the ones that I have here, which are all dark grey. HD goggles, irrespective of which system you're using, give a far superior picture to analog goggles. Now the lenses in these, and if I pull out my HDO2 Fat Shark goggles, you'll spot that the lenses are the same and even the adjustments look like the same as well. So if you've ever tried the HDO2 Fat Shark goggles and they've been able to focus for you and the IPD works for you, then these will as well. And that makes sense because Fat Shark reusing that lens array from the HDO2 makes a lot of sense. It's the best lens setup that they've ever made. In here are 1080p OLED displays that provide a much better, brighter picture. And the goggles are much smaller and lighter than some other systems that are around. Now the fit on the face is good, but I needed foam around the nose for light leaks. Um, I had a little bit of an issue with the narrow European nose, so I had to add these additional pads. Now there's no input for analog receivers, sadly, but I have upgraded the antennas on my particular goggles. Mine came with four little stubby antennas. All the antennas here are left-hand polarized and it's RP-SMA connectors, which seems to be the common way that the HD systems are doing it. So I've gone with a couple of Thrasher antennas on the top and a Digipack from Menace RC and that also means that when I'm flying if I'm looking slightly down which most of us pilots tend to do in FPV land then I can just angle the patches up. Now the antennas themselves three of them are used to receive the signal from the model and one of them is used to transmit and communicate with the air side pieces. 16.9 screen by default and there is a HDMI too. Now this is a USB-C port so you will need to get your hands on a specialized cable that goes from USB-C to HDMI to plug it into anything else. I really like this because it means that I can have a little screen that flying buddies can actually look at and watch and see what I'm viewing. Also means you can plug it into um, other HDMI things for recording. It really opens up the opportunity. Other things on here, there is a power button. Not sure why some reviewers are making such a big deal of this. The HDO2s had a power button three or four years ago, and it's on here as well. There is a joystick to navigate the menus here at the top. Some reviewers have mentioned that the joystick is the wrong way around. Um, myself and my flying buddies who've been playing with this system haven't found that. It's naturally intuitive. To go up in the menu, you press the button towards the top of the goggles. To go right, you press it to towards the right. Some pilots have reported that that feels the wrong way round. I wouldn't be surprised if Walksnell changed the firmware to give you an option of the orientation for that in the future. The really cool thing is there's no need to plug into a computer to activate and use, which I'm a big fan of. The other thing I'm a big fan of with this is that it does support more than just basic Betaflight MSP on-screen displays. It supports iNav, KISS, Ardu Pilot, and other OSDs. And it also supports full canvas mode, which can display the menu and view important flight information in real time. Image transmission also supports distance 
detection and also machine finding mode. And the channels on here are similar to the other HD channel spacings on other HD systems. So you get eight channels if you're FCC and four channels in the, if you're in the EU. Now, on the Avatar HD kit, then not a lot to see here at all. There are diversity antennas, only weighs about 15 grams, has eight gig internal memory that's used to record video on if you want to use it for that, but also used to pop things on there like your firmware updates if you want to do that. There are two ports on it. One is the port that you will plug into a flight controller for power and ground and then you have the transmit and receive connections and the other is for the USB adapter so you can plug it into a computer to download the files that you've recorded or to do things like update the firmware and again no need to activate this thing to use. Now my first impressions of this system from the playing that I've done here are very good. I really like the modern looking menus to change the settings. The image is bright and clear and easy to see and the focus and IPD adjustment should suit the majority of pilots. And it addresses some of the issues that I've had with other systems. We have a HD out, we have full OSD support. I am disappointed that there isn't scope to add analog into the goggles. At the moment, with the testing that I'm doing and the flying that I'm doing, I'm taking three goggles to the field, a set of DJIs, my analog, HDOs, and my walk snail system here as well. I really like the idea of modules where the receiver is something that you can just plug into your existing goggles, because that really lowers the point of entry, particularly for those analog pilots who've already invested in some top draw analog goggles. Maybe we can have a module version of Walksnail in the future. It would require a redesign of the module bays in modern goggles to handle the HDMI signals and power, but wouldn't that be nice? One thing that I have been excited about is that I've already heard from other manufacturers of quads and whoops who are already making systems with the Walksnail HD components installed. So I'm going to get some of those in to do some reviews. But the more of those that come out, the faster the adoption is going to be, the more successful it will be, and the faster the price will come down. So in summary, I'm sure that for almost all existing HD pilots, there isn't a compelling reason to invest in another HD system. And I can't see existing HD pilots moving to walk snail. But for analog pilots who face a lot of options for HD right now, it could be a very different story. Most I talk to want something that they can buy that'll be a longer term option, like it was for their analog FPV stuff. Some analog pilots, myself included, are still using stuff that they bought five, six, seven, eight years ago in their flying. Most just want to know what it's like compared to what they have, and they want to know if it makes sense to upgrade. Personally, I like to support vendors who have an open approach to the hobby, those who work with third parties, those who listen to customers and add features through the life of the product and work to provide a stable product that lasts for a long time and is supported for a long time. I like vendors like Radio Master, I like projects like Express LRS, the Multi Protocol Module Project and others. I want a system that doesn't release new hardware versions regularly, some of which are not interoperable with the previous ones. I hate it when vendors release stuff that seems to have built-in obsolescence, aggressive upgrade paths, and then puts you on an expensive treadmill. I want a HD system that works and supports the parts of the hobby that I love. Whoops, wings, planes, quads, beta flight, iNav, different radio systems. The three brands behind Walksnail, which are Cadix, Fat Shark, and Walksnail themselves, are well versed in the traditional analog side of the hobby and have a good reputation with me anyway. So from what I can see, the new Walksnail Fat Shark system is trying to be that system, and I see that as a very positive thing. So if you have any questions of what you want me to cover in these videos and what you want me to see, particularly if you are an analog pilot, then do pop them down below. And I'll try and make videos in the coming weeks and months that answer those questions for you. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.